Oh, man. Oh. Sure would be nice to have somewhere to sit. Sup, dude? Here you're in need of a chair. Who are you? Ah, oh, just a guy who knows a thing or two about sitting. And I found this square tube in lying around and made this plan for something quick and easy for you to make so you could relax. Awesome. So today we're going to be using this AHP Alpha Mig 190 to make something to take some stress off these old bones. For the project today, we're going to be making a modern style stool out of this one and a half inch square tubing, uh, just so I can have somewhere nice and comfy for me to sit on here in the shop. And for the top, I was thinking it'd be kind of cool to use some of this old barn wood from my grandfather's barn. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, hey, Bo, that's flammable. And I'm going to say, hey, I know. But I'll probably only use this stool when I'm TIG welding and have to spend a lot of time sitting in one place. Otherwise, it's going to be moved out of the way. But I also have a plan for when I attach it that I can take it out easy if I want to put metal in there down the line. Recently, Austin put out an awesome video on making miter cuts if you're using a chop saw. Unfortunately, my chop saw is an abrasive chop saw, and if you've ever tried to use one of those to make miter cuts, you understand it's a nightmare. We're going to go back to the basics and use a good old fashioned cutoff wheel. This is a metal one. And if you've never used one before, make sure you have your earplugs close because if you use this and don't have them in, your ears are going to be ringing for days. Trust me. So each of these pieces are 48 inches and I could just cut them up into equal size pieces, put some miter cuts in there, but I also thought about it might be better to just notch and bend them. That's another technique you can use for fabrication. Considering we are just making a horseshoe shape, I'm going to just mark out 16 all the way across. That'll be three equal pieces. Then what I'm going to do now that I have those marked there, I'm going to put a 45 on each side. So I'm going to mark these 45s, butt it up right to where we want our line to be. We're going to make our 45 there and then flip that over, make 45 here. Do the same thing on this side. Since I already got that line there, I'm going to take this right at the end of that. If we did this correctly, it should be right at 16 inches. It looks like we're not. Great. So that's not right. That one's pretty close. That one's right on the money. This one's not. So easily can fix that. The other thing I could do is just measure out 16. Make it a little easier on ourselves. Put our mark at 16. Now I got something to line it up to. So now we have this lined up. We'll put X's on the sections we are going to cut. In theory, if I cut these out, I should be able to just collapse it in and not even have to worry about those miter cuts. We got a really rough notch here. I gotta do some cleanup, but I gotta also do the exact same thing on this other piece. I thought, let me try this notch and bend technique that I've seen so many times on the internet and it makes it look so easy. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bend and already, I don't know if you can see this, but we have a problem. We are not square. <laughs> it is going this way. And then if I bend up this one, mm, we're also going a different way. <laughs> so very, very easy to see right here. We're not straight. So what we're gonna do, we just broke them off right there and now we got all of our pieces. Also beautiful hands here. Mm. Now we have to fix all of these miters and so trying to save time actually added a whole lot more. It's time for another montage. One down, bunch to go. That little mishap, it set us back, I won't lie to you. 
we've got to the point where we got to set up our machine. So let's go ahead and set up this alpha MIG for some MIG welding. This alpha MIG can support a four or eight inch wheel and we are going to put an eight inch spool wire on there. My favorite is 030. I'm actually gonna put it like that. And then this goes on there. And we put that spring on there. Let's double check that we have the right drive wheel on here. If you need to change your drive wheel, you just take off that and then you got it here. And I am going to be using the 030 side here. Just make sure that that's fitting in there. We'll put that back in there. Reinstall this little retainer cap. Tighten it on down. Clip in there. Pop it in this little guide. And then you want to make sure it goes in the other side. Once that's there, tighten it down. Usually try to go to about the three. That's installed. Cool thing about this machine is that we have an inlet for both our TIG gas and our MIG gas. So our mixed argon and CO2 blend and pure argon. But today I've already been playing with the TIG side. So we're going to install the MIG gas. All right, time to install the MIG gun. Nice easy connection here. Line up all these parts on this side, plugs in, and then you just screw it on down. Get it nice and snug. Our ground clamp, which also comes with the machine. We're gonna connect that to our negative here. Good to go. We gotta get that wire up in the gun. So we're just gonna hold the trigger until it comes on through. I feel that wire coming. Oh, there we go. It's a great opportunity to talk about the weld app here. I'm doing MIG welding. I'm doing carbon steel. Material thickness that I am working with is just under an eighth inch. So that's under 11 gauge. So I'm gonna say 14 gauge. Our wire is 030. We calculate, oh wow. All right, so we're way off. This is in 225. And we should be up at 18.5. Our CFH, 25. We're way low. All right, so we should be good on gas. Let's try that again with our new settings from the Weld app. It's running now. Thanks, Weld app. I'm gonna tack up my corners here. One side done, looking pretty straight there. We have it all squared up here, but we have this big gap. What is a welder if they can't weld the gap? We're gonna have to do some cosmetic work to this bad boy, but we'll be able to make it work because it is a shop chair. Woo, hot tamales, hot tamales. All right, now we got this big gap here. I didn't even have to pulse. Slain sludge down, y'all. So we're gonna blend them all down. And I'm gonna save these inside corners for last. One important thing, we'll turn on our ventilation here. Beautiful ventilation system brought to you by Walmart. Eyeballs. Gotta get these inside corners as well. One side done. Eyeballs. Nice. Nice and square. Got a big old gap on this side. Not the best. Check my square. Eyeballs. Nice. Let's go ahead, weld it out. Last but not least, we got this big honker. This one, we're definitely gonna have to do some sort of manipulation or pulsing. So, let's see what we can do. Beautiful. It's functional, it works. Time to hit these insides. To 
show you a little bit of our results here. Uh, we didn't have much space for that, that weld to go into, so that's why a lot of these welds are looking real humped up. Oof. But where we had that big gap, actually, you could see it actually sunk in there. I want to make sure we got all the way through these, too. So, some CJP, as my friend Austin Hargett would say. But we're going to see. We're going to grind it up and see what it's all about. Do that enough times, you'll get good at it. If we look at this here, we are close. We're very close, but I'm not 100%. This one's kicking out just a little bit. So what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm gonna have to cut this out and redo it. But that's what I get for trying to rush it, right? We got this set back up here. We're gonna weld this back, hopefully, Keep it nice and square. I'm gonna try with this little magnet here too to just try to keep it square. Got it all welded back up here. And actually having that groove gave it somewhere to go. The last ones were sitting up way high. That was actually pretty nice. Back in square. And now we can actually move on to finishing this stool. To get the right height for this, let's see how far down my butt goes. Looks like around 26 will be the most comfortable. We got our support beam cut down to size. Now all that's left is to attach it. And then we're gonna have to put some wood on here, but we'll get into that in just a bit. First one that I'm gonna attach is gonna be on the side here. We wanna make sure we take off all the mill skill in the surrounding area first. All right, now that we got that done, it's time to weld again. Ooh, a nice little burger there. We're gonna wanna cap this spot too. Definitely capping it. Last spot we're gonna tack here. ideas of the welds. With all of those mistakes out of the way, it's time to find a place for these cheeks to sit. <laughs> You're gonna cap that, right? Uh, yes, of course I'm gonna cap them. Good, I, uh, I'm no trash. We're not gonna have a piece of trash living out in this shop. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I have an idea of how I'm gonna do it, okay? Explain. I measured out this barn wood to see where it would be sitting if I was going to set it in. Mm -hmm. And it left me with about three eighths at the bottom. So my plan is I have a bunch of this three eighths round hey, stock. Where, where did you get that? Where'd you get hey, that? Don't worry where it got. No, where'd you get it? No. Okay. We've got a lot of this hanging out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut slats that I'm gonna put in here. So just in case I am doing something super, super flammable or throwing a bunch of sparks, we won't have to worry about my butt catching on fire. That's my biggest concern. I know, that is, I know. Let's get to it. This is the plan. So this is gonna be the bottom side of our top where our seat is gonna be. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this scrap piece of one inch and it's gonna be my spacer where I'm gonna weld in these little slats I've made out of the round stock. We're gonna just go all the way across. So then once we have that in there, we can slide our pieces of wood in that we could take out at any moment if we want to. So let's get to welding. 
The last thing that we have to do is go ahead and make our little caps for each of the end pieces, but I'm also gonna make a little strap to go on the back to hold that wood in place. So I'm gonna cut this little piece of strap up and put it on. We got our strap made here. We're gonna set it welded in right here so it'll be flush with the top. And we're gonna have a little bit hang down on the bottom, but that's okay. Got some porosity on this side. Here's a slick little trick I saw in one of our recent videos from Guy about attaching your caps. What you wanna do, take a little bit of filler wire and you just tack it right in the middle of the cap and you have something to hold on to while you're putting it in there. And one. I'm actually gonna just fill a little bit in so that I have something to blend down with. And we're just gonna take this filler wire. Now's the time for the moment of truth. Am I just as sketchy with woodworking as I am with metalworking? Let's see. One's good. Success! We have a fit and this thing is complete. All we gotta do is do the sit test. And now for the sit test. Oh, yeah. Wow, man, I'm pretty impressed. Thanks, thanks, man, and thanks for all your help. Do you happen to know anything about greenhouses? Cause my wife has been dying for one and could really use some more help there. Nah, man, like I said, I'm a chair guy. That's all I really know. That was weird. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're looking to make a stool like this for your shop, head on over to the Weld app and find the same video. And I'll make sure to put all the plans in there so you can make one just like it. Until next time, we'll see you out there. Mm -hmm.